Uh, so, Danny, what have the last few days been like for you? Oh, it's been a bit weird, actually. I actually felt a bit flat. You know, uh, we had a couple of days off, and after the celebrations and that, you feel, oh, because you've done it, and then you snap out of it and go, wow, what a, what a great feeling. Let's enjoy the moment. Uh, but, you know, and I'm not just saying this, that Gaffer, we had meetings yesterday, and that's so now it's all about winning as many games as we can now, finishing strong. I think we owe it to the other teams we're playing against and their opponents in whatever uh, position or fight they're in within the table to do things properly, which we will do. We want to, now is the time, like yourselves, ask about records and goals. And now you can really focus on doing those sort of things and uh, and giving the fans, uh, maintaining their focus. You know, the good thing with the position we're in or why winning the league is the... Uh, the supporters now, because I think they're taking two, three, two thousand four hundred to York, and it will continue won the league. They can have a real party and celebration, and leave the serious, focused stuff to us. Uh, so yeah, it's been a good couple of days. Back to business. We know at the end of the season there'll be more parties and celebrations, but now is a little two or three week period where we're back to business. How do you reflect on Saturday now that the dust has settled a little bit? Yeah, you really wish that the day and night could go on longer. You know, I sat upstairs with my family and had a beer and it was it was such... And you try and soak it all in, seeing the joy on people's faces, uh, you know, when, when the supporters run on the pitch and you see their faces and people with tears running down their eyes. It's fantastic. And it, it is great for them because I've said all season to you, Liam, about how they've had dark times and, uh, you know, protests and anger in their bellies. And now they've got a bit of joy in their bellies and they can go and have their summer holidays uh, knowing that their team are champions. So... You know, we are back where we belong, in, in my opinion. It's easy to say that now it's done. You know, obviously, as you can appreciate, I can't say those sort of things as, you, as you're still fighting for it. But we are back where we belong. And every person associated with this football club in this town should enjoy every moment. It, it must feel really uh, satisfying when you put all that hard work in across the season and then it all comes to a, a head on Saturday with by lifting the trophy. Yeah, it does. And the... Uh, Obviously, the, the manager heads it all up. And within that and our, and our backroom staff, we've all had specific roles and duties and responsibilities throughout the season, which we, I believe we've all carried out to, to a good standard, uh, whatever that is, whatever department that is. And it only takes one or two of those things to be out of sync. And, and the things don't always go to plan. But more times than not this year, things have gone to plan due to everyone being off the same page, uh, being led by very experienced manager, a club that does the right things. You know, we've, we've gone overnight to places and prepared right. We've been backed uh, and we've given something back by obviously performing most weeks. Yeah. After the disappointment of Halifax the other week, you're thinking in front of our home crowd, can we do it? And we certainly did it. The, there are pictures around the club, um, you know, of former title winning teams. And now you guys are, are going to be on those pictures as well. Um, how does that feel? Yeah, very proud. Obviously, very proud. It's nice for for your own ego. We've all got egos. Your own ego to be part of something that's that that succeeded. It's great for yourself. You know, uh, we all want to do well in our careers, and then you you want to do well for for people that it means a lot to. Uh, and and we've done both of those things as individuals and as, as a group of staff and as a as a town. I think we've carried ourselves well. I think our supporters have carried themselves brilliantly every away ground we've got. Uh, we've had a bit of class throughout the season. Uh, and and the table doesn't lie, and results don't lie. And what we've got to make sure now is that we we finish the season like we've done ninety nine percent of it. Does it feel real? Because I know a lot of supporters have have said that it, it it doesn't. You know, how does it feel for you guys? Yeah, I think it. it yeah, I suppose once you see the fixtures come out over the summer for next season, you go, okay, yeah. these are different set of teams we'll be playing. Uh, yeah, listen, we've been close, haven't we, for a few years, and it's gradually got closer. Last year was you know, ever so painful about going over old ground again uh, and five minutes away from being where we are now. So, yeah, it's uh, sometimes you've got to go for a bit of pain. You've got to, you've got to go go through those things to appreciate the good times. Been a lot of bad times here, so let's all appreciate the good times. What do you want to see from these next five games then as a coaching staff? What, what, what are you looking for? Wins. Want to see wins. You know, want to see performances. We've had, obviously... Uh, Halifax away, Dork in away, the two standout poor performances, even like the other losses, it weren't that bad, you know, it was just not our normal selves, but those two were, were, were pretty poor for our standards, especially Dorking 
we don't want to see any of those sort of performances. You know, we want to we want to go away from home or come home and uh, and really entertain our supporters like we've done all season. We want to maintain our unbeaten record at home. That's a big thing the manager keeps talking about. Uh, we want to see the, the the away fans bouncing tomorrow. You know, so we don't want to see them having to sing about being champions because we haven't turned up and they're just trying to keep things going like maybe they did at Dorking and York. It, we want them to be bouncing around because they'll celebrate a win just like it was just like it was three or four weeks ago. So, yeah, we, we just want to see the same things, Lynn. Uh, I'll keep saying, Gaffer talks about consistency and standards and, and not changing and not coming not coming out your lane, as he calls it. Training today, pre preparation on York, it's exactly the same as if we hadn't won the title yet. Is that 100 points now probably your, your next target then that you'd like to achieve? Definitely. 100%, excuse the pun. 100 for 100, yeah, it is, it is. And I think uh, we've talked about the 100 points and the unbeaten home record. I think they'd be massive for the club. Any other stats that have been thrown at me, uh, excuse me, ignorance, have, have got a little bit mm. blurred out. But those two of the things for me are the are the main ones that stand out for me, uh, only because it's, it's, it's this season. I know there's stuff yeah. in the past that we could be beating, but for this uh, specific season to get 100 goal, uh, sorry, 100 points, to go a whole season unbeaten at home, Wow, that would be cracking. And a lot, lot of people are asking about how you might go about approaching uh, team selections for the rest of the season. You know, whether you'd give some players who perhaps maybe haven't had as, as many minutes as what they'd like or whether you just go full strength. You know, how do you see it? Yeah, I mean, certainly we're going into every game wanting to win it. Uh, it wouldn't be a case of the, the trophy games where you're giving a whole whole set of our young prospects at a game and, and look and see which ones we, we like. Still trying to win the game, by the way, but understanding that you're sort of your main hitters are arrested maybe for the next fixture. Uh, there might be a couple of young lads involved in the squads over the next few weeks. There might not. There might be uh, some lads who haven't played much game time uh, getting a look in. There might not. I think while there's, uh, while there's a real focus on getting the, the uh, 100 points and remain unbeaten. It certainly isn't a, it's going to have a game of football and whatever happens, happens. There's a real focus on winning games. But you're right, it's a fair point. I think mm -hmm. between now and in the season, there, there may there may be a few uh, few faces that people haven't seen much of or none at all, maybe getting a look in. Um, so I was just saying, some of the other clubs at the bottom of the table will hope that you do play your strongest side. Yep. Do you feel like you have a responsibility to other clubs to keep that integrity of the league or... You know, you've done your business. It's up to them. You know, they've got themselves in that position. Yeah, no, I understand. I understand both parts of your question. I think I think the uh, the latter one filters into the the former one in terms of uh, it's a responsibility to ourselves to carry mm. on playing well. The manager certainly won't let us take the foot off the gas. We don't want to finish the season uh, at a whimper and just pick up a few points and maybe you know the party sort of filters out. We want to keep that momentum going whilst understanding that a lot of teams are looking at our scores to help them out. So that's mm -hmm. not us saying we want to help specific teams, but the word responsibility, I think, covers a lot of areas being ourselves and other clubs. So all those clubs need to know is that we're preparing. Uh, we don't know them. We don't owe them anything, by the way. You're right. No. We owe ourselves just to keep this stat, keep these standards high. And if that helps out other clubs, that's out of our hands. Will Griggs already done a, an interview in midweek with radio to say that he's he's out for the rest of the season um, mm -hmm. with his hamstring injury. Um, how big of a shame is that for him, even though you know he's done his bit, hasn't he? <laughs> it's a shame. He wanted to get over the old 30 goals, and I think he would have. Uh, I think if you saw Joe Quigley come in, did ever so well. Uh, and I, don't get me wrong, listen, if we were level on points at the top of the league and Will Griggs out for the season, uh, it, it's a huge blow. Huge blow because he's one of, if not the best striker in the league, and he's been great talisman for us so it's a, it's less of a blow obviously when you've won the league already virtually obviously after Halifax it wasn't guaranteed but it, it sort of was uh, so yeah people with him personally I'm sure I know he wanted to score a lot more goals but the benefit of of himself being injured now is that he can really just sort of concentrate on his rehab it's, it's not going to be rushed knowing that the summer break he can focus on coming back for pre-season so if we had three or four months left it would be a bigger blow believe me and is there any update on Ryan Colcliffe as well? Yeah, he's definitely going to be out uh, for the next couple of games. It's the same ankle as it was earlier in the season. Uh, hopefully get in before the end of the season, but we'll wait and see on that. Uh, and Prex is obviously is back in contention now, which is great uh, because it was 
we were all doubted whether he'd put on the shirt again this season and after playing a big part in so many games that's got us to where we've got to, it's great for Miguel that he can potentially put the shirt on again before the end of the season. And does Raheem Shackelford have a little injury at the moment or has he just been left out? Yeah, no, he he, he, uh, he got a real tight calf at, uh, after Oldham. Uh, he's a doubt for tomorrow, but we'll assess him today. And just on York then, um, they've had a lot of, they've got a lot of players, a lot of managers this season. You know, what, what can you expect from them? Well, we, we're playing a team that's won the last two. Uh, and like I say, as I'm not a big believer in form, uh, but in their eyes, they'll be they'll be seeing it's an upturning fortune. You know, they've they they lost they got hammered, didn't they, at Altrim? And then they've suddenly gone and got two good wins, you know, against uh, two big playoff contenders. So that really is that really is saying something that uh you can go from using fives and sixes and then suddenly turn around and win at Bromley 2 0. So fair play. I mean, I remember uh Hinch, the manager there from my time at Brighton. Uh, and Mr. Elphick is, is his assistant, you know, mates of mine, more more Mr. Elphick. But uh, yeah, Mr. Intrum was a good lad down at Brighton. He's done ever so well at, at Worthing. Uh, and so, listen, I'm sure, I'm sure they'll they'll be looking to to stay in this league. And and after tomorrow, I wish them all the best because it's a cracking club with great infrastructure.